In this short video, we're going to look at how we can customize the user interface of the Apprise web viewer. But before we do that in code, let's see how we can do that using the showcase, which lets you see the entire functionality of the web viewer. So here we have the showcase open, and we're going to go into UI customization and click on hide or show UI elements. This allows us to enable or disable various features of the user interface, either the header or various options within menus. It also allows us to add or remove options within the annotations tool group, for example, highlight, free text, and so on. And when we've done that, we can look at the configuration snippet, which includes example code of how we can achieve this. We'll come back to this in a minute. So let's look at how we can do this within our own code. This is a sample React project created using Vite. When WebViewer is instantiated, it returns a promise, and we can get the instance object from that and use it to modify the user interface. For a start, let's enable a new feature, which is the ability to select a file directly within WebViewer. When we save the code, our menu now has the extra option. Fantastic. Before we go any further, let's tidy up our code by destructuring so that we can access the UI and feature directly. Now we're going to disable some features, which are to download and print the PDF. And this is done in a similar way by passing in a list of features into UI Disable Features. Once we refresh, we can see that the menu now only contains Open File and Save As, as well as Settings. Now we can't remove Save As using this method because Save As is not a feature. We have to remove it using Disable Elements. In order to do that, we need to get the data element for the menu item. Because Save As is a menu item that's only available when focused, we need to specify Emulate a Focused Page. And then we inspect the element. We can see what its data element is. In this case, Save As button. Next, we can add Save As button into the list passed to UI Disable Elements. Once we save our code and refresh our page, the menu no longer contains Save As. Now let's look at how we can modify what's contained in the various tool groups. In particular, let's look at the Annotate tool group that contains a large number of options, and which we looked at in the showcase earlier on. We can add or remove items using exactly the same mechanism that we've already tried. At the start of the video, when we looked at Showcase, we saw how we can get a code snippet that we can use to make changes. Now we're going to use that code snippet to update the UI from our own code. We will need to include the names of those buttons within quotes. Then when we save and look at the UI after a refresh, those buttons have now been removed. The last thing we're going to look at is how to modify the icon and title associated with a button. And I'm going to use the highlight tool for this, so I'll need to re-enable it. You can see that at the moment its title is highlight and that it has a grey icon. We're going to make changes by using UI update element, passing in the name of the button that we want to update, in this case highlight tool group button and giving an array of properties. The first thing we're going to do is change the title or tooltip, and we're going to change that to Add Highlighting. If we save and refresh, we can see that the tooltip has now changed. Next, we're going to change the icon. We do this by dragging a new icon into the public folder so that it is available as an asset. Now we just need to specify the path of that image, save the file, and reload the page. And the icon will have updated. That's great. So what we've seen in this video is a fairly simple customization of the UI. It is, in fact, possible to completely create an entirely new custom UI for WebViewer, since the project is open source. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.